Hello everyone, today I'm going to showcase a Guy Charm gameplay of mine. This was a ranked game at the Veteran ELO, so I've been messing around with Guy Charm on my new account. Nothing too serious, but after a while I realized that Guy Charm is a really strong Pokemon that can easily carry the game. Currently, I've only played about 23 games with Guy Charm, but I managed to get a 91% win rate on it. I will continue to play Guy Charm until I reach the Master tier with it. I'm hoping to get there with an 80% win rate. I play Garchomp in the central lane because it allows for faster level to bypass its weak early game. My build is Muscle Band, Focus Band, and Buddy Barrier. My battle item is Fluffy Tail. Garchomp is great with the Fluffy Tail because you can solo every objective in the game extremely quickly, even killing Zapdos in 8 to 10 seconds just by yourself. You do not need the eject button because once you're level 6, Dragon Rush is on a 6 second cooldown, so that helps with the escape. Alright, let's get started. Alright, so the beginning of the game, just get your sand attack. If you're in the grassy area, then run up top side to pretty much catch the puppy because the puppy will run towards the top side. If you're in the sandy area, it runs towards the bot side. Do keep in mind that the early game here, I kind of lagged um, because we're probably playing in like an Asia server or whatnot. But either way, just continue to clear. Use your first fluffy tail on the buff and try to do the double crab before you do the second buff because then you can save your fluffy tail for it and it'll make the clear much smoother. Here just use both ability, the sand attack gives you attack speed so that helps with the clear. And now my fluffy tail is coming back up, I just use both ability and then fluffy tail to pretty much stop the buffalo from charging. Now I get level 5 extremely quickly and now just look for a lane to get for the bees. Your primary goal is to just go for the bees. Do keep in mind that Gibble is pretty weak early, so you do not want to fight ranged Pokemons if possible because then you just get heavily outpoked. Here I'm just waiting for the bees. If the enemy face checks me, then obviously I can fight for it. Sand attack into Bulldoze, and that should be able to get you a lot of your passive stacks. Here, the enemy actually walked into melee range, and you can see Gibble's power and max stacks. I have 5 stacks on my basic attack so I just pretty much keep chopping them and just melt them and that gets me level 6 and I get a quick score down. So against range Pokemon you generally won't be able to do that but if they are melee then yeah it's easy to get full stacks and just continuously just keep attacking them with your basic attack and you just melt their HP bar quite quickly as long as you have full stacks. Alright after declare essentially what you do is just go in the, to the river and just clear for the crabs. Your goal is to try to get level 8 before Dreadnought spawn. And if you get your gank off early, then getting level 8 is extremely easy. Yeah, just clear for the buff, and then head straight down for the second rotation of the B spawn, which is at 720, and Dreadnought will spawn 10, pretty much at 7 minutes. So you have about 20 seconds to do the Bs. As you can see, I'm gonna get level 8 quite comfortably here. And try to use your fluffy tail um, on the buffalo if you can, because the charge pretty much you don't want it to charge away from you, otherwise you just clear it a little bit slower. Right now I am level 8, I am down bot lane again to fight for the second rotation of bees. Here the enemy team walk up a little bit far, so I'm just going in for some poke damage. Our goal is not to like tower dive them here, but I want to fight for the bees if possible. As you can see the bee spawn, I'm just going to go immediately for it, because the bees give so much experience that essentially I just get level 9 off that. I still have a little bit of time before Dreadnought spawn, so you can continue to clear and if you... There is not possible to get level 10 before Dreadnought spawn. From all the games that I've played so far, I've never gotten level 10 before Dreadnought spawn. Or at the very least, not at the 7 minute mark, right when Dreadnought spawns. Here you can see that I have full stacks on my, my passive and I just pop the fluffy tail and immediately just melt the Dreadnought. I did not even have a chance for the enemy team to contest at all. And that should pretty much get you to level 10 quite safely. Now that you have your Unite move, here I decided to just skip the Rotom here and just go for the buffs. So the goal of playing Garchomp is, it doesn't really matter if you lose the first Dread, because as long as you can get to level 10 safely, you can actually trade the Dreadnought for the Rotom if the enemy team is a lot stronger than you early. So pretty much try to get level 14 or level 15 by Zapdos spawn, and that's pretty much your baseline. If, to tell if you're doing or you're playing Garchomp correctly. 
Every game I get to level 14 almost guarantee right when Zapdos spawn, so it is possible I would say like 99% of the game, unless you're just super far behind. But generally, it's very easy to just focus on leveling because Guard Charm clears everything so fast. Whereas it's a pretty tiny skirmish, it doesn't really matter too much whether we get the kills here or not, but getting the score down does give a lot of experience. So here, my teammate just is zoning the enemy team, so I'm just going for the score, get some experience. And I'm just gonna rush straight for the bees now. The bees is like your best friend essentially, and your buffs. Yeah, every time it's up, you just clear extremely quickly, just back and rush in, earthquake, and pretty much just melt them. Here, the enemy team actually look for a fight here, so I'm just gonna, okay, I'm just gonna jump up over them. And I'm level 12, they're level 7 and level 9. And I'm, I just pop my Unite move, kill the Cinderace. Unfortunately, I was now able to kill the Ninetales, because he did get the move speed from the Unite move. So, he was able to just walk away, but that's fine, whatever, not a big deal. There's no uh, chance of the Charizard killing me here, because my Dragon Rush is up so frequently, I can just use this to escape, or use this to chase. And, Garchomp is extremely mobile, that's why you don't really need the eject button. Not many situations in the game requires an eject button, as long as you have your Dragon Rush. Alright, so the second Dreadnought did spawn, so I'm just gonna rush down here and just help my team do it. I think they're a little bit of an unfortunate situation here as you can see. So the Dreadnought pushed the Absol away so the Absol was not able to get the auto attack. And I used my Dragon Rush on it but the Ninetales also used his Dancing Gleam and he was able to get it like 0.25 seconds faster than me. But it's okay here I'm just doing guard charm things like if you're low HP that's okay because if you have focus ban there's not a there's a good chance that you just survive and just melt the enemy team's HP bar and it happens quite often where you can just sit in the middle of a team fight and just soak up so much damage. As long as you have uh, your focus band up, then you should be fine. Garchomp's biggest weakness is the crowd control, as you can see here. Here, I was pretty much crowd controlled heavily by the Ninetales, so I was not even able to move, and three attackers focusing me, I don't really, I cannot survive that, essentially. So watch your positioning against crowd control. If you're fighting tanks or if you're fighting other all-rounders, then it's pretty easy to win. But if the damage is piled on you that quickly, then you just end up dying. So that's one of Garchomp's biggest weakness. Alright, so here we are level 13 as you can see. Uh, even though the enemy team is winning at this point, right? But personally for me, I'm doing quite well for myself. Because we did get one of the dread, but we lost the second one. Like I said, it's not a big deal as long as you just focus on leveling. Getting your buffs is really important. And also getting the bees for the levels. So, I'm gonna be able to get level 14 quite comfortably here. And once you're level 14, the reason why level 14 is so important is because the base stat that you get from level 13 to level 14, it's much more than you would get from level 12 to level 13. And level 14 to level 15, you get even more base stats. So essentially, you get a lot of stats and makes you insanely strong around level 14. Most of the time you won't be able to get level 15 before Zapdos spawn however. But like I said, it's not a big deal, level 14 is all you need to carry the game. Here I see the enemy team is gonna go for the Dreadnought, which is great for us because then they get the debuff for the Zapdos and we can just do the Zapdos and they get a 50% damage debuff. So here I'm just gonna go for the score along with the Wiggly and now we can contest for the Rotom. As you, you can see how fast I'm just gonna melt this Rotom with the fluffy tail. Same thing I did with the treadmill earlier. So just do your standard combo, stack your passive, and then just pop the, pop the fluffy tail, and that's it pretty much. <laughs> but I'm just gonna die within like 5 to 7 seconds quite easily. Alright, now it's pretty much prime time. The Zapdos did spawn, so you want to fight for it if the enemy team is around the area. But if the enemy team is not around the area, you can actually start the Zapdos. And if they're distracted, you can kill it around 8 to 10 seconds quite consistently as long as you have, to have your fluffy tail up and your level 14. But if you fight with the enemy, then essentially most of the time you will always win just because of how strong Card Chomp is in team fights. When you have your Unite move, you're pretty much unkillable and you dish out so much damage. So there you go, we pretty much fought for it. We were behind at that point, but it doesn't really matter. Like I said, you personally, if you're up ahead, you can actually carry the game. You can carry the team fight. So your teammates actually does not matter. You just need them there to pretty much be like meat shields for you. So that's how I've been winning a lot of my games. It's just selfishly farm and get the 
retinol whenever I can. If I can't get it, oh well, it's not a big deal. You don't lose your game off that. But you, uh, you, Garchomp pretty much helps secure the late game. If you're losing because you're losing a lot of Zapdos, even though you're winning the early game, I feel like Garchomp solves the issue of that because he scales so well into the late game that getting Zapdos or fighting with Zapdos, it's almost guaranteed. Like, the most fights you just win hands down. So, the goal of playing Garchomp is to just get to level 14, level 15 before Zapdos spawn, and just do it extremely quickly if the enemy doesn't react to it, or you can simply look for a fight around Zapdos pit if you're so strong while the enemy is around, that's fine too. Not many Pokemon survive or can survive Garchomp damage. Just remember that your own level is everything, it doesn't matter if your teammates are behind or if the enemy is ahead, the final goal is to get level 14, level 15 with your Unite move available for Zapdos, and you should just win majority of your game playing like that. Hey, anyway, we're just gonna defend and we should be able to just win the game, like I said, it's easy peasy, and most of my games pretty much, most of my games I actually get ahead in the early game, so I decided to showcase this game because this is one of the few rare games that I was not able to be ahead in the early game, but still managed to win the game. Alright, that will be the end of the Garchomp gameplay. I'm gonna try to climb this account to Master Tier only playing Garchomp. So, if you enjoy the content, give the video a thumbs up to help the channel grow. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.